Hey guys, sorry about not making a video in a while. I just really needed a break. Hopefully you understand. And yeah, let's get right into the video. So I'm going to be talking to you about some of my favorite utilities. Utilities are applications located within the applications folder. If you scroll down, there's a utilities folder. And utilities, there's a bunch of them. I wish I could show you all of them, but unfortunately, I don't have time to do that. So I'm going to show you my favorite ones, the ones that I use the most. And they're all very useful, but these are what I find the most useful for, for me. And uh, the first one is Activity Monitor. And this is probably the most well-known of them all. Activity Monitor, it displays information about the processes running on your computer. So as you can see here, I'm displaying all the processes and it's right now sorted by the percentage of CPU that they're taking up. So ScreenFlow Recorder is at the top because it's taking up 27%, which is the most of all the other processes. And you can find out information about the memory, the type of process. If you really want to know more about all the processes and really how to take advantage of all the features Activity Monitor has to offer, I'll have a link in the description to a really useful article I found about Activity Monitor, it's got everything you need to know pretty much. So yeah. At the bottom of the window, you can find out more information about the CPU. There's actually like moving graphs. Same thing with about memory, there's a little pie chart here. Um, I like viewing network information because I can see exactly how much data is received or sent per second. And you can actually change the dock icon down here to make it a little easier for you to check up on information so I can change it to network usage if that's what I use the most so now my dock icon has turned to that little graph so I don't actually have to have this window open I can actually hide it by pressing command H and I can just look down here in my dock and see the um, network information so that's just a brief overview of activity monitor next one is something that comes in such handy if you have two Macs like I do. I have a MacBook and then I have my iMac and they're right next to each other. So if I ever want to transfer files, instead of like emailing them to myself or doing something like that, I can use a feature called Bluetooth File Exchange. And you can launch the application directly from the Utilities folder or Spotlight or wherever. And you can actually select files from your Mac to send to any Bluetooth device that accepts file transfers. So I could send it to my MacBook or even my iPhone. So what I'm going to do is show you how to set up your computer to make it so you don't really have to launch the application. So in System Preferences, go to the Bluetooth Preference and just make sure that it's on and discoverable. And I like to show the Bluetooth status in the menu bar. Um, so it's right here and I can just send a file right from my menu bar. Next you're going to have to go to the Sharing Options make sure that Bluetooth sharing is selected. And you have to make sure that you have those settings on both computers. So I do have mine on both computers. I'm actually going to open up my MacBook and I'm going to send a file. So in my menu bar, send file and I'll send a screenshot. Now it's going to browse for a Bluetooth device. So it found my MacBook and all I have to do is hit send and I'll have screenshots kind of showing you the process because um, unfortunately I don't really have a way to show you on the other computer so I'm gonna hit cancel there but I'll have screenshots the next application is disk utility obviously it performs any type of disk related task and that could be erasing a disk completely um, creating a new disk image um, repairing or verifying permissions on a disk but pretty much if you ever need to do something disk related just use disk utility the next application is called grab i don't use grab to take screenshots i use keyboard shortcuts which if you're not inside the application you can use command shift 4 to get a crosshair or command shift 3 takes a picture of your whole screen but grab does offer a few more features than just the shortcuts. So if you go to the capture option, you can get a timed screenshot. So you can start the timer and after 10 seconds, you can capture a screenshot. And another option is 
you can go to Edit Inspector. And now if I capture, say, a selection, the inspector tells me the size of the image and then the depth of the image. Next application is definitely one of my favorites. It's called Grapher. And obviously by the name, it is a graphing application. You can create 2D graphs and 3D graphs. And I think it's really useful if you ever have trouble with graphing, it's useful to just kind of type up your own equations and see how the graphs change. So I'm just going to choose the default two-dimensional graph and enter in a linear equation. So y equals 3x plus 6. So here's my line. I can add another equation, and I'll make this one a quadratic equation so you can see what a parabola looks like on here. Um, and to make the square, you just hit the caret, which is above the 6. Um, okay, so there's a parabola. You can zoom in or zoom out. Um, there's actually this thing called examples. So if you hit examples up here, you can get 2D examples, um, and then there's 3D examples. I don't really know anything about 3D graphing, but they're kind of cool to look at. So for example, contours, it's just kind of cool looking. You can change around the numbers here and just see how it like affects it. So now it got way taller. I guess if you put in something like 0.5, it's way smaller. Anyways, I don't know anything about 3D graphing. But um, another useful feature is obviously you can save the graphs. So um, I think it's just good for helping yourself learn more about graphing if you ever have trouble or you just want to play around with graphing. It's just really, really useful and I think it's good for learning. Next application is Migration Assistant. Can't really show it to you, but um, I can talk a little bit about it. If, when you get a new Mac, It'll ask you, um, do you have an old Mac? Do you want to transfer information? And it uses Migration Assistant to do so. You can actually transfer your entire user account or just certain files and folders and settings. And that way, instead of starting fresh when you get a new computer, it's like all your old files are there. And you can transfer information over um, a wireless connection or through Firewire. Um, the next application is System Profiler. If you go to your Apple logo and about this Mac, you get some basic information about your computer, the processor, the memory, and the startup disk. But if you hit More Info, System Profiler will actually launch. And pretty much it just gives you a ton of information about everything you need to know with your computer. Any hardware component along with network and even software. Mm -hmm. This next application is Terminal. Um, terminal is how you access the Unix base of Mac OS X. And you can enter commands and make your Mac do stuff. Um, you can Some things you could use for like little hacks, like just user interface hacks. But then there's actual commands that are like actually really useful that I don't really know about. Um, and then there's just really fun commands. You can actually play t um, Tetris within Terminal. And I'm going to have a link to a video made by Matt's Macintosh, a really good YouTuber. And it's all about just fun terminal commands and useful terminal commands. So check that out if you want to uh, find out some more about Terminal. And finally, the last um, utility I'm going to show you is called Digital Color Meter. And this one is really simple, but it's very useful for anyone who's into like graphic design. Pretty much, you take your cursor and you hover over any color, and it actually tells you the, the well, whatever you want it to. It could be the RGB as a percentage, actual value, hex value. So right here, 94% red, 100% green, 100% blue. So let's say I make it actual value. Now it actually tells me you can enter this into like Photoshop. So red 133, green 115, and blue 18. And like I said, it's just useful for graphic designers to like match exact colors and things like that. And that's it for this video. Hopefully you've learned about some neat applications that you didn't really use before. 
and if not, I apologize, but um, yeah, thank you very much for taking the time to watch, and please check out my um, blog, it's italkapple.tumblr.com, you can follow me on there if you have a Tumblr, and I post there regularly, so even if I don't make videos often, it's easier for me to just quickly type something up on Tumblr. And then also follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash italkapple, um, because I do update about like when videos are coming out or what's going on with my life, why I haven't been making a video and stuff like that. So yeah, thank you very much for watching, and hopefully I'll make another video soon.